In this video, we're going to take a closer look at ellipses. Again, recapping what we talked about in our original video where we looked at all of the different conic sections, I have an ellipse. The center of the ellipse is h comma k, and we're always going to graph that, but notice our ellipse does not go through the center. It's just obviously centered around that point. And we have the relationship that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. And c squared is not going to be in our equation, but we will have to find c so that we can determine the foci. And so let's take a look at what we know. The first thing is you're either going to have the ellipse longer on the horizontal axis or longer on the vertical axis. So if whichever one has a, because what I left off of the slide is that a is greater than b. So whichever value has the greater denominator, that's how you know which axis is the major axis. So if the greater value is below x, then it's horizontal, and if the greater value is below y, then it's vertical major axis. You can find the endpoints of the major axis, which are also called the vertices, by adding a to the center value. So if the major axis is horizontal, this distance is a. If the major axis is vertical, this distance is a. The length of the minor axis, again, half of it, the radius of the minor axis is b. Same thing if it's orientated the opposite direction. And the last value is c, and again, that's the value that's not going to be given in our equation, but we can solve for it, and that is the distance to the foci. That's c. So c is the distance to the foci. So I have done all the work for you to put them into equations for you, so let's take a look at an example. For our first example, we are going to have to complete the square a couple of times. Now I've written everything that you need to remember down in the bottom right corner, including something I haven't talked to you about yet, which is called the eccentricity of our ellipse. And the eccentricity is a ratio of C divided by A. And again, C is a value we're going to have to compute given A and B. And the eccentricity is simply the ovalness of our ellipse. You can't make this stuff up. The ovalness, which means the closer that value gets to zero, the closer your ellipse will look like a circle. And it won't become zero, obviously. But the closer that value gets to one, the more smushed your ellipse will be, or your circle will get more and more squished, making it look more elliptical. So let's go ahead and do an example. The first thing I need to understand is that I'm going to have to complete the square twice because I have an x squared value and I have a y squared value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather my x squared with my minus 6x and then I'm going to leave a space for something that I'm going to add. And then I'm going to take my y squared and which is actually a 4y squared. And whatever you have, when you have a value, a coefficient on your y squared, you want to factor that out. So I'm going to factor out the four, which means instead of eight Y, I'm going to put two Y and then plus blank. On the opposite side of my equation, I'm going to add that 87 to each side. And then I'm going to leave a plus blank for whatever I add to X. And then I'm going to put a plus four blank because this is four times blank. So I have to add the same thing to each side. So let's go ahead and see how we do. We're still going to take the b value and divide it by two and square it. So for this one, that's negative six over two squared, which is negative three squared, which is nine. That goes in both places. And then for the y value, I'm going to take two divided by two squared, which is one squared, which is one, and that goes here and here. So on the left side of my equation, x squared minus 6x plus 9 is now a perfect square, and I have x minus 3 quantity squared. For my y values, I've got a 4 on the outside, and then this is y plus 1 
quantity squared. And then on the right side of my equation, I have to combine 87 and 9, which is 96 plus 4, which is 100. Now, I don't have things in the format that I want because I need this to be equal to 1. So now I'm just going to divide everything by 100. That leaves me with x minus 3 quantity squared divided by 100 plus 4 and 100 will reduce to 1 and 25. So this would be y plus 1 quantity squared over 25 equals 1. And just know that you're never going to get nice numbers like this. I purposely gave us nice numbers like this so that we didn't have to do a lot of square root of this, radical that. Um, from here, I'm just going to really find H and K and A and B and C. Those are all of the values that I need to be able to finish this question. So H is because the larger value is underneath X, that's how I know that the major axis is horizontal, which of course I knew that going in, which is why I gave you this set of information, which means the 100 is A squared, so A is 10, and the H value is whatever is being subtracted from X, which is 3. Now looking at y plus 1 quantity squared, the k value is whatever is being subtracted from y, so that's negative 1, because y minus negative 1 would look like y plus 1. And then b, b squared is 25, so the square root of 25 is 5. The last thing I need is c, and c can be found using the fact that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So c squared is equal to um, 75, which means c is equal to the square root of 75, or 5 radical 3. And it's not a bad idea as well to be thinking about um, those values as decimals. So obviously as mathematicians, we don't use decimals very much. We like things to be exact. Um, but the problem with that is if I'm then asked to graph or do something like that, I need to know about what that decimal is. So that's 8.66, we'll put. Now, let's go ahead and find what we can find based on these values. So I need to find the center. The center is HK which is 3 comma negative 1. The vertices, well, the major axis is horizontal. We already talked about that. The vertices are h plus or minus a, so 3 plus or minus 10 comma k, which is negative 1. So that's 3 plus 10 and 3 minus 10. Then we have the endpoints of our ma minor axis, and notice we're not asked for that. So endpoints of minor, because the vertices are the endpoints of the major axis. So the endpoints of the minor axis would be h comma, so that's 3 comma k plus b, so negative 1 uh, actually plus or minus b, so plus or minus 5. So that gives me 3 comma negative 1 plus 5 and 3 comma negative 1 minus 5. And then the last thing is the foci. And the foci would be h uh, 3 plus or minus, and this is where I would use that 8.66 instead comma k, which is negative 1. Again, only because they're asking me to sketch the graph, and if I want to sketch the graph, I need to know whereabouts 5 radical 3 is. 
So this would be 11.66 comma negative 1 and then 3 minus that would be negative 5.34 comma negative 1. I hope I did that math right. So, oh, no, 5.66. Sorry, I was losing my brain for a minute. So now let's take a look at what that graph would look like. And again, we're not going to be super precise in this. Um, the center is at 3, negative 1. And then I've got to go to about 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We get the idea. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So using the center at 3, negative 1, the vertices at 13, negative 1, and 7, negative 7, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Aren't you glad you get to listen to me count? And then the endpoints of the minor axis are 3, 4, and 3, negative 6. 6 and so that means this is uh, mine always look like a football and <laughs> I'm sorry about that um, that's about what my values will look like and then of course I would graph the foci as well so 11.66 somewhere in here comma negative 1 and negative 5.66 1 2 3 4 5 somewhere in here Oops, that other one disappeared. And then the last thing that I haven't found is the eccentricity, which is C over A. So again, this is where I might look at C being, uh, sorry, E is going to be about 8.66 divided by 10, which is 0 0.866 approximately. So again, what did I say? The closer that gets to one, the more spread out it will be, and that makes perfect sense because that is a very um, spread out ellipse in my opinion. Let's look at another example now, kind of going in reverse again. They're giving me some information about the ellipse and asking me to write the standard form equation. So the first thing that jumps out at me is they were nice enough to give me that the major axis is vertical, which means I can get rid of all of that information. If the major axis is vertical, I know the larger value will go under y. They also gave me the center, and so remember the center is h comma k, which means h is 1 and k is 2. So I have h and k, I still need a and b, so let's take a look at that last information they gave me. And it might be more helpful to draw the values that they gave us just so we can look at it. But you don't have to if you have a good sense in your mind about what an ellipse looks like. But if the center is at 1 comma 2 and they gave me the point 1 comma 6 and they gave me the point 3 comma 2, then I know because this is the center I know that this distance is 2 just by counting, or I could have subtracted, of course, 3 minus 1 to get 2. And I know that this distance is 4 because 6 minus 2 is 4, or just by counting. So why do I care? Well, because I know that this distance is b, and this distance is a. So now I have that a is 4 and that b is 2 and the major axis is vertical. So now I can write my equation as x minus h quantity squared divided by b squared. So b is 2 so that's 4 and then plus y minus k quantity squared divided by a squared, which is 16, is equal to 1. Up next, let's take a look at hyperbolas.